Um, I don't care what company you're with, what product you're selling. Like when you talk about starting from ground zero, it's hard. Like it is not easy. Okay. Like I, I would be, I mean, it's simple, right? Like the, the concept of selling insurance is very simple, right? Very simple, but it's not easy. Okay. So when we share some of these things, I realize what you're going through. I went through it as a brand new agent. I was literally going out and door knocking 175 doors on a Friday or a Saturday, cold door knocking with no leads to sell burial life insurance, right? Or whatever life insurance I could sell. So I get it, but, but most people are not putting in enough activity, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Okay. So I'm going to talk about how to start from ground zero and what you need to think about is inspired by my buddy, Chris. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Welcome back for another episode of the Rising Stars podcast, live every Friday, 8 a.m. Central Center Time today. Okay, today I am going to have a special episode where, so one of my buddies, his name Chris, Chris, you know who you are, man, uh, reached out and said, hey, can you help me? Can you talk about how to go and start from ground zero as a new, brand new insurance agent? Okay, so a part of the rising star and really why we're doing the rising star is because there are people out there just like you listening right now that have passion for the industry, you're excited, you have some enthusiasm, you really want to win and succeed, but a lot of people just don't know what they what to do or they or or they could be a rising star. They could have like some talent, some skill, a bright future, but they could just be plugged into some of the wrong stuff, right? And because of that, they end up it affects their mindset and they end up quitting or felling just a little bit too soon. Okay. So today it's just me on the podcast, right? I'm not going to interview anybody. I'm not going to interview a rising star. I'm going to interview the old Cody that was a rising star, not the new Cody that's a power player. Okay. But I do want to mention that even though somebody thinks they're a power player at some point, man, they're always a rising star, right? Because you always have to be a student of the game. You always have to be coachable and you always have to be willing to listen. Okay. So I enjoy this podcast. Hope you do too. Okay. If you're out there listening, please share this thing out on social. Let others know, make sure you're subscribing so that you get notified as soon as we drop an episode, because this is one of the coolest things that I get to do. Yeah. I love interviewing power players. Okay. Um, that are really crushing it, but I want to really, I want to be the person that like is focused on helping new struggling insurance agents. Like that's kind of a purpose of mine, by the way. Yeah, we do a lot with a lot of big time people, but that's a purpose that, that, that that's a, that, that's what makes me feel really good, right? So a few things I'm gonna share before I get into my content today. Um, one thing specifically, um, we'll see if he listens to this as well. I had a gentleman that I had never physically met. His name is Charles. Charles, you know who you are, buddy. He's down in, um, in Maumel, Arkansas. I went to speak um, to the Jason Everett Agency, 150 agents with Liberty National and Globe Life down in Maumelle, Arkansas on Monday, just a few days ago. And I was down there and Charles saw that I was down there and shot me an Instagram DM and said, hey buddy, I literally live a half a mile from there. I would love to come over and say hello if that's okay. Right. And so I'm like, dude, totally buddy. Right. So you, you absolutely need to do that. That'd be really cool. So he did, he came over and we did a little Instagram story together. We took a picture together. We hung out and just was able to, you know, share some encouraging words for someone that maybe needed them. Right. So if you're out there and we're ever in your area or you ever want to spend time together or whatever, um, I want to spend time with you. I want to help you. I want to meet you. And so that was really cool. Um, to see that. We also had um, someone else that had recently reached out um, that had shared, that really is a rising star, that had shared some things that would go, was going on in their life. Um, name was uh, Tim from Botswana um, in, in a different country. And it's brand new to the business, watches our stuff every day and loves it and just wanted, was inspired and wanted to thank us. So um, the, the brand's really growing. We're helping a lot of insurance agents really around the globe and around the world. And we're having a blast doing it. Okay. So I can tell you, if, if you don't keep listening and watching and pouring in and letting us know that you're there and sharing this thing out on social, et cetera, and tagging me, 
then guess what? Um, there's no reason for us to do it, right? Like the reason we do it is because we want to help others. And so we appreciate you listening and, and we're pulling for you. Okay. I can tell you that. Um, I don't care what company you're with, what product you're selling. Like when you talk about starting from ground zero, it's hard. Like it is not easy. Okay. Like I, I would be, I mean, it's simple, right? Like the, the concept of selling insurance is very simple, right? Very simple, but it's not easy. Okay. So when we share some of these things, I realize what you're going through. I went through it as a brand new agent. I was literally going out and door knocking 175 doors on a Friday or a Saturday, cold door knocking with no leads to sell burial life insurance, right? Or whatever life insurance I could sell. So I get it, but, but most people are not putting in enough activity, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Okay. So I'm going to talk about how to start from ground zero and what you need to think about is inspired by my buddy, Chris. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Um, I also just had a cool, exciting surprise I wanted to share. Um, I was just invited. Uh, there's a, there's an organization called NAFA, National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. They have over 20,000 members across the U.S. And I just got to, to invited to speak at their national convention in Phoenix in August. Okay, so hopefully you'll get to meet me there at that point. Uh, so you have to look that up. It's going to be called Apex Summit, uh, and it's going to be a really cool thing. Okay, so there's five things I want to go through today that I want to share. Um when it comes to you starting at ground zero and trying to freaking push this thing and make some money and succeed, okay? The first thing um, that I wanna talk about is uh, a target, right, a goal. So, so even if you don't know what the target or goal should be, you need to ask some others, you need to figure this out because I do not believe, I do not believe in doing something without having a target, right? It's like shooting a bow and arrow without a target to shoot at, right? Without a buck or without a physical target, right? Or a Bella Hay or shooting a gun at beer bottles on a, you know, piece of wood, right? Like it's it, it shoot, it, it's, it's aim. It's not, it's, it's kind of like just going about life and just hoping it works out, right? Like just pure luck. Like I just hope I win at a higher level. Right. So I want you to think a lot about that because I remember being in your shoes years ago and as a brand new insurance agent, I set a target, like a manager walked in, a bunch of us stood up in the room. He said, Hey, m maybe one of you will make it. And, and that really like inspired me. And, and, and it, I wouldn't say, yeah, it was just, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was natural, positive inspiration per se, but it really f focused me that, dude, if there's going to be somebody that succeeds, I'm going to be the one, right? And I, I was succeeded at the highest level, level of everybody in that group. And that was true. And I really believe it was true because I made a decision. Okay. So, so right now you need to make a decision on what you're going to do this year over the next three years, five years, 10 years, the rest of your life right? Like my, one of my biggest goals is to go and fly all around the world on my own private jet and, and speak and impact millions of people around the world, right? I'm getting invited to speak a lot. I'm going to speak probably a hundred times this year. Um, it may not get to a hundred, but we'll see. That's a goal. Um, but we're getting invited a lot, right? But when you put that stuff out there into the universe and you, and you actually put action with it, then some good stuff happens, right? So when you think about the target, I want you to make a decision, be decisive, and actually commit and make some commitments to winning at a higher level, right? That's what targets are really about, by the way, okay? So I wanna challenge you to have a target as we go through and really start to help you start at ground zero. If you don't know anything, you need to figure out where you should be. And I'm not saying set the target, okay, what's the, what's the average person make? That's not what I'm saying, right? Like what's the top dog ever done in this office, like in their first year or their second year or whatever, right? And then go beat that. Like, why not, right? Like I, I don't really want to compete with other people in the office. I do, as, as cliche as it sounds, I do truly want to dominate. Like I don't want to just compete, even though well, the, per, the one person I do want to compete with is myself, right? Like I want to compete with myself. I, I want to focus on dominating and maximizing my full potential, okay? And a target does that for me. So that's really important. I'm telling you, you could say, Cody, this is, the, dude, the, the, you know, that's not helpful. It is. Whether you believe it or not, whether that's you're struggling with that piece and you don't get it at this point, I'm telling you, it's so freaking vital. Like you have to have a target, okay? So that's number one. Ground zero, make a decision to win at a higher level and freaking go all in and commit to doing something big. End of story.
right? Even though that's not technically the end of this story. Okay. Uh, what's funny too, is I thought about getting on this podcast and saying, okay, Cody, what do you think about, and then ask, just ask myself questions for 30 minutes, right? But I thought that'd be kind of weird. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay. Number one's a target. Number two, number two is mindset, right? And you hear a lot about mindset, right? People talk about it. I talk about it a lot when I speak, by the way. But mindset is, mindset is more than just, hey, this is what I want to do. It's that I'm focused on remaining and having the best mindset that I can, right? Like there's, um, there's, a, there's a story in Think and Grow Rich called Three Feet from Gold. That's a book, Think and Grow Rich. It's, it's, it's where the, the author um, really interviewed 500 of the wealthiest people in the world and documented what they shared, which is pretty powerful, by the way, right? Th think and Grow Rich. And it, it, on page three, the story is called Think three feet from gold. It's a story of how R.U. Darby is his name, a specific individual, um, had went to a specific state to like in Colorado, I think it was, to mine for gold. And he mined and looked and looked and looked and finally saw, because he had whole, he had heard you could mine for gold here, whatever. So he went there and then he found, it's a, and it's a true story by the way, and he was, he was digging and he finally saw the shining ore right? He finally saw like some, 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 like, oh, I think there's some gold here, right? Well, he, he covered up the spot. He went back home. He told his family, they bought some machinery. They had it shipped out there and then they went back, right? And they went back and then they started mining. And then one day, so, so they, they, they filled up a whole cart and a few more carts like that, whatever that means, um, would pay for all of their debts that they had accrued from this decision to do this, right? And so then they go, and I'm not going to get the story exactly right, but, you know, it's close enough, okay? And he's sitting there like, man, a few more of these carts, and we are starting going to rake in the, the profits. Like, we're going to pay off our debts. Well, then after a while, it went, um, they didn't get their money back, and they lost it it went dry and they're like, oh crap, right? Well, they finally, once they couldn't figure it out, uh, decided to quit, okay? They decided to quit and they went back home and they sold the machinery to a junk man and the junk man went out there, he looked it over and then he hired someone to actually come out and look at it that knew what they were doing. And the person said, wow, the people that were out here before were three feet away and they just didn't understand fault lines, right? And then this person made millions of dollars worth of gold because he f was smart enough to go find someone that knew what they were doing. Like, it's kind of like you um, from a mentorship standpoint and us working together, right? In some degree. And so then that happened and this guy made millions of dollars. Well, then this other person that was really a quitter technically called R.U. Darby, um, went and went into the business of selling life insurance. And because he remembered that he was three feet from gold, he decided I will never quit again. And then he was one of, I don't know, the a few people by way back when that were selling over a million dollars a year annually in life insurance and went on to be one of the more successful life insurance salesmen ever. And he shares that story because, you know, in insurance, it's very easy to quit. In anything, it's very easy to quit. It's kind of like you are literally waving the white towel and saying, I quit, right? Or you're ringing the bell, right? Or, or, you're, or you're slapping the canvas, the mat, and you're tapping out, right? If you're, if you're you know, if you're in an MMA bout or whatever. And that story is really cool because I really believe a lot of us were three feet from gold and we don't even realize it. Like we are so close to quitting. Some of you are listening right now and you are, you have considered quitting. You've contemplated it. You've thought about it. You've honestly thought, man, if it, if, if this week it doesn't pay off, I'm going to have to move on. You don't. And I can tell you, if you ever quit, you will be labeled as a quitter forever. And I promise you, you will regret it because there's more money in this industry than any other industry in the world. And you are so close to making it big and to doing something special, helping a lot of people, creating generational wealth and succeeding at a high level in this business, right? So if you're out there, 
I want this I want this mindset piece of this to really encourage you because I'm telling you you can succeed at a high level right you totally can and I want you to and I promise you as long as you decide you have the right mindset and you choose to never quit ever you will have a better chance of success but if there's a if you have the wrong mindset and there's a slight piece of you that's thinking about you may possibly potentially quit at some point in the future if it doesn't get better or if it doesn't get good enough. If there's just the slightest piece that creeps in, man, you will quit. Okay. You will quit. And I'm telling you, that's not the way to jump in this business and do this thing, by the way. Okay. Um, so that's mindset, right? I also want to mention before I get to the last three pieces of starting from ground zero, and the next three are really important, um, is you're listening to Rising Star Podcast because we have a Rising Star Mastermind. Like I was voted a rising star award in the insurance industry years ago by a company in Costa Rica. And that's what I remember. And that's why we call it the rising star mastermind. And so if you're out there and you want coaching, training, accountability, help, access to a community of people that want to help you, um, I bring on an, another trainer every single week and we co-host a call, right? And um, you can get access to rising star for only $88 a month. Okay. Uh, if it's video, the link's below. If it's audio, it's CodyAskins.com forward slash rising star. Okay, CodyAskins.com forward slash rising star. It's only 88 bucks a month. You get access to a weekly training and accountability call. You get at every single week for a whole year, by the way. Okay, you get access to um, my entire CA cell system video training platform and library, uh, 420 modules and quizzes. It's phenomenal. Um, you also get access to a private Facebook group, right, of a bunch of other people like you that want to win at a high level, that want to learn from one another. And you get access to a two-day workshop here in Missouri that you can come to or that you can watch virtually. And it's an event that we're probably going to do every three to four months throughout the year that you can come to. And all you're paying is 88 bucks a month, okay? So it's when it comes to actually helping you succeed, um, I haven't seen anything better that brings more value in our space for 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 a super low barrier to entry cost wise. So if you're listening to this and you want to join that, please do. We'd love to have you. Okay. Either way, we'll love you, but I promise it'll help. Okay. Um, third, prospecting, right? Like you 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 have to be getting in front of people. So here's what you got to figure out. You've got to choose something that you're going to do prospecting wise. Quit trying to do 42 different things, right? Or quit trying to do something that, that you absolutely hate that you're just not going to do. So for me, I would cold call. I didn't love to cold call, even though I was actually really good at it. Um, I could literally legit cold call in a five hour period, make a sell every life insurance sell every single time, which is over the phone, by the way, which is crazy. But I typically hired um, or, or brought over college kids to do call nights and call with me. I also remember where I would cold door knock a lot, right? A lot, a lot. Um, and I didn't mind it. I enjoyed it, right? I would find senior housing facilities in different parts of the country, in different parts of my area, and then I would go door knock them. Um, and they were smaller towns, with senior housing areas, kind of like um, Section 8 housing, or there'd be like four units in a, to a building, like that type, that type of stuff. And it was typically one level, one story, you know, and there'd be 20 of these buildings with 80 units in the senior housing facility, right? So they're pretty cool. Um, but I, I love that. Um, I eventually, I, I, I wasn't someone that worked leads a ton. Later in life, I started to, right? But I would say that um, you, I also work my warm market a lot. Like you have to find something. I don't care if you're selling PNC, life, Medicare, health, doesn't matter, right? Employee benefits, group, et cetera, whatever. You've got to find something that you can focus on, that you can go and do every single week. I don't care if it's calling. I don't care if it's door knocking. I don't care if it's age leads. I don't care if it's, hey, I'm going to take 25 age leads and put them in MapQuest route planner. And I'm going to put, and I'm going to design a route in three days, three or four days a week. I'm going to go door knock 25 people per day. I don't care what it is, but I can tell you, you have to choose a prospecting method, right? My buddy, Chris, or some other people probably, okay, probably are not following a single prospecting method and actually doing enough of it to win. You could say, Cody, I'm making, dude, I made 42 calls, you know, right? Like, like I made, 40, you're not going to succeed making 42 calls, right? My buddy John says, if you do, can't run 30 appointments a week, then you're part-time. You're thinking too small. 
I always ran at least 15 appointments a week, every single week, right? Even when I was in college playing basketball, going to classes, all that. So you got to think about the prospecting piece is really, really, really important. I want, I want to stress this. I cannot stress this enough. You are physically not doing enough typically, or you're trying to change up what you're doing every week. Do something every week for a whole month and do enough of the activity and I promise you, you will see success. I don't care whether you're doing it to get um, appointments or whether you're doing it to just get in and make a sale immediately. Like you, you, you have to commit to doing something. And yes, you could have one, two, three prospecting methods, but I wouldn't have a bunch, right? Like I would say, here's what I do. Here's how many, t you got to be able to answer these questions. What's your, pro what's your main prospecting method or methods? Okay. How many of the, that activity do you do in a week? If you can't answer these questions, you, you haven't figured it out right. You haven't solved it. Just do something. I don't care what it is, right? I don't care if I got to drive to you, fly to you, whatever, jump on the plane, doesn't matter, and freaking walk you through door knocking 25 doors in a day. Doesn't matter. You can see success, but you got to do something. Most insurance agents are lazy. They think they're starting, they, they say they're starting from ground zero and they're blaming everyone else in their life and they're not doing enough. Simply do something and do it every single week, okay? I'm getting a little stern on the Rising Star podcast today because it's important, okay? Super, super, super important. Um, so think about what you're doing, right? What are you doing? How many times are you doing it? What type of results does it produce? You should be able to answer those questions. And if you can't, you're either not making a decision on what you want to do and or you're lazy. End of story. And I can tell you, if any of this is true, you will leave. You will quit. You will be a quitter. You will tap out. You will wave the white flag and you will not succeed. But I want to be the dude that motivates you, inspires you, encourages you, and, 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 and kindly urges you to go do something. Prospecting is really important, okay? Because if you don't, you don't get in front of people and you don't make sales. Which brings us to sales. You need to focus on becoming, this is number four. You need to focus on becoming a master of the art of your craft. Like whatever you're selling, I would be the best. I would focus on being the best at it. I would tell myself I'm the best at it. I would write down the best at it. I would read whatever books related to whatever I wanted to sell. I would read every close. I would read every sales book. I'd read my zero to six figures book that you can get on Amazon for less than 20 bucks, right? I would also read Brian Tracy's book, The Art of Closing the Sell. I would read Cardone's book, Sell or Be Sold. Like I, I, there, there, there's, I would read Ziegler's books. I would watch YouTube videos like you're doing now. Like I would commit to being a master, right? Will Smith says, um, there's no reason for plan B because it distracts from plan A. Some of you mentally still have a plan B. You've still got the part-time job. Go freaking work hard enough that you can leave that crap. You don't need it, okay? So think about that. Like the sales piece, you need to commit to being really, really, really good, right? I don't care what you do, but you need to commit to being really good at sales. You need to commit to learning. Uh, every single morning and every night, I'm learning, I'm prepping, I'm, I'm prepping for my day, I'm reading, like I'm listening to videos and audio books. Like I am committed to being better Right, which is going to bring me up to my last point in a second. But this sales piece is really, really, really important. I, yes, I made $117,391.13 and I had the 10.99 to prove it. And most don't in my first eight months at 20 while going to college, playing, playing basketball and having no experience. But I pulled that off because I did a lot and I committed to being really good. I would even record my appointments on audio on my phone or on a re phone uh, uh, audio recorder and I would play it in my car and I would listen to myself, right? I wasn't putting it out there for the world to hear, so I didn't have to tell anybody, right? Because I wasn't publicizing it. I did it for me only, right? Now, if, you, if you're doing it and you're gonna you know, keep it and everything, you're gonna publicize it and you're gonna share it with others, then yeah, you need to get some people's permission, right? But for me, it was just for me, my own purposes. But I listened to that stuff because I was committed to being great at sales, okay? I was committed to being really good at sales. I did not wanna finish last. I didn't even want to finish second, right? Some of you, you're okay with second, okay? Why, right? Why? So so anything I do, I, I want to be the best at it. And from a sales standpoint, you, you, you learn how to sell at the highest level. Like you learn how to build rapport. You learn how to fact find. 
you learn how to present, you learn how to close, you will be able to, you, be able, you learn to ask questions well. You learn, you learn how to assume. You learn how to use trial closes. You learn how to present and how to say things correctly and you can write your check for the rest of your life. It's super, super, super important, okay? And then last but not least is, is a routine, okay? Routine is so, so, so important, man. You need a routine that you can rely on every single morning. Like I would ask you, do you think the most wealthiest people on the planet have a daily routine? If you said yes, you're right. But if you don't, all you're saying is, I don't want to be one of the wealthiest people on the planet. I don't want to, I don't even want to be successful. I don't want to be like them, right? And if that's the case, again, you're going to quit. You're going to fail. But, but the, the routine piece, here's why I love the routine piece. Routine creates habits, okay? Habits create discipline. Discipline creates results and results create success. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Routine creates habits. Habits create discipline and you need discipline. When you think about making a call, freaking make the call immediately, right? Discipline creates results, results create success. So if you don't have success, I would say, do you get results? Eh, not consistently. If you don't get results, you're not disciplined. If you're not disciplined, you have some bad habits or no habits, normally bad. And if you don't have habits or bad habits, then you don't have the right routine, right? And you've got to focus on having the right routine, right? You have to have the right routine. Also, Chris, I need to come talk to your whole team and company and all that, man, and, and freaking jack everybody up, right? So if you're out there, tell your manager or your office or your upline or your partner or you, that you need to hire Cody, whether it's through Zoom or physically coming to your office to talk to your team, because I will break this stuff down on a flip chart or a whiteboard and everyone will leave there ready to run through a flipping brick wall, right? Whether they need, need, need to or not, they will be ready, trust me, okay? And I do a lot of that and I love doing it. And if you're out there and you want me to do that, email Cody at CodyAskins.com and we'll figure it out, man, okay? Cody at CodyAskins.com, we'll figure it out, okay? So routine's really important because it creates a lot of discipline and habits for you. I don't care what the routine involves, so I'm gonna give you some ideas. It could involve waking up at a certain time every single day. That is a must, okay? That's a must, right? It's stupid, that's a must. Um, it doesn't have to, I mean, uh, reading, um, writing down goals, walking on a treadmill for 10 minutes, working out, walking around the block, um, stretching, yoga, like, I don't know, you got to be like listening to an audiobook, watching YouTube videos, um, prepping for your day, for your meetings, like, like drinking coffee, right? Like listen to something inspirational and good, right? You know, whatever, like you, you need to have certain things in your life, watching my CA sales system, my videos, you know, going back and watching the last two years of free calls that are in our rising star program, right? Once you join it, codyaskins.com forward slash rising star for 88 bucks as of now. And if you think about that, like there's a lot that you could be doing to get better and to improve. If you know that there are things that you can do to get better and I give you ideas that you can use to get better and you don't use them, you don't really want to succeed, okay? So if I tell you this stuff and I share this stuff and you don't physically apply the routine which creates habits, discipline, results, and success, then you don't want success. If, if, if you're not waking up the same time every day, if you're not ever trying to improve your health, if you're not ever trying to improve your mind, if you're not ever putting great stuff in, like here's a bonus that I'll finish with, okay? Most of us are consuming garbage on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's what I mean, okay? We listen to the media or the news. We scroll through social media and, and we got a bunch of dumb stuff that we follow, right? Um, the stuff that we, we watch stuff that maybe we shouldn't watch, right? We listen to songs with terrible lyrics, okay? I would be auditing that stuff, right? Because what is happening is, and here's why I mean by this, you're just consuming freaking garbage all the time, is that what you say and how you talk to yourself is extremely important. So if you're negative, if you're whiny, if you're complaining, if you make excuses, or you talk to yourself like you're a loser, then you're gonna be a loser, okay? This all is within your control, okay? 
So how you talk to yourself, what you listen to, what you look at, and who you're around, and what you see and read, etc. It all matters, and most people are sitting there consuming garbage every day, and they're wondering why they're not having success. Okay, some of you need to cut some relationships, right? Like if people aren't positive in my life, guess what? I cut them, right? I don't sit there and continue to let them pour freaking poison into my brain, right? Like I'm committed to this success thing. And for me to have success, I got to be the best version of me. I'm not perfect. I'm freaking far from it, but I'm committed to being better every single day. And I'm trying my best not to pollute my opportunity, right? With stupidity around me. Okay. So as I share this, as you listen to this, if you're not a part of Rising Star, I want to implore and encourage you to join CodyAskins.com forward slash rising star because it will benefit you. It will give you the right people to listen to. It'll introduce you to the right people in the industry. You and I will get to spend more time together. It'll give you a super robust video training library. It'll give you access to a Facebook group with other people wanting to win at a high level. It'll give you access to two days here with me several times throughout the year, right? Like it gives you access to the knowledge and information that you need. So that's the last thing I want to do is, hey, don't consume garbage. What you, how do you talk to yourself matters. What you put in, the information is very valuable and important. The more you can learn, the better. And you were meant to find success. You are a rising star, whether you believe it or not. You are going to win at a high level, whether you believe it or not. But you got to do something. You got to take some action. When you're starting from ground zero as an insurance agent, this is the stuff you need to know. Screw the other stuff. This is the stuff you need to know. I don't care if you got to re-listen to this 12 times. You weren't called to fit in. You were called to stand out. And this is going to make sure that you end up being the rising star. See you on the next one. If you love this video, you know I got another one that you're going to love. I got a video just to your right, right here. Click on that. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. And I'll see you in there. Uh, I do a lot of direct mail. So, okay. But I do it a little bit differently. This yep. is going to be more of a tie thing for sure. But uh, I don't even call them. Wow. I don't even call them.